Living things do not become exempt from the laws of physics simply by being alive. Such phenomena as electricity, inertia, and fluid dynamics are found within living systems just as readily as their non-living surroundings. Granted, given the complexity of living structure and function, these various phenomena must often be analyzed in relatively simplified forms. This should be nothing new to any physics student, in all honesty. As it turns out, there is an entire discipline, that of biomechanics, that focuses upon the mechanical functions of living systems. An exhaustive description of this discipline would easily fill a book, and in fact it has filled several from various authors. Here I intend to focus upon just a single case study, a comparison of locomotion between two very different organisms. Most people are familiar enough with a butterfly. These often colorful insects are commonly seen visiting flowers in many parts of the world during certain seasons. A rather different sort of creature bears a similar name. The sea butterflies are a group of swimming snails found throughout the world's oceans. While their appearance and internal structure is very different from that of the insects, there is a curious convergence between the swimming motions of these odd snails and the flying motions of the more familiar butterflies. This remarkable similarity in movement patterns can be explained largely by a brief exploration of fluid mechanics. Such an investigation requires a familiarity with a calculation known as the Reynolds number. First things first, though, to begin with, I should clarify precisely what a fluid is and explain a curious dichotomy in typical fluid behaviors. To a physicist, both liquids and gases are regarded as fluids. Thus, fluid dynamics encompasses the behavior of both liquids and gases. Or, to be more specific here, both seawater and air are subject to similar physics. Broadly speaking, when a fluid moves, it may either move in a calm, orderly manner, or a chaotic, swirling sort of pattern. The former phenomenon is known as laminar flow, while the latter is known as turbulent flow. Laminar flow is fairly quiet and consumes relatively little energy, while turbulent flow is quite noisy and considerably more energy is required to move a fluid in this manner. Because of this difference in energy consumption, the difference between laminar flow and turbulent flow is very important in certain fields of medicine and engineering. Laminar flow is a splendid thing in a human circulatory system or respiratory airway. Turbulent flow tends to cause problems. Consider the difference between nearly silent breathing at rest and the labored audible wheezing emanating from a constricted airway. This pattern tends to be similar in the more artificially constructed systems as well. Laminar flow is lovely in a water pipe or over the wing of an airplane. Turbulent flow can become considerably more expensive and difficult to deal with. So how does a physicist predict whether a system will exhibit laminar flow or turbulent flow? Apart from proper models and extensive testing, a quick and basic method is calculating what is known as the Reynolds number. This number is obtained by multiplying the density of a fluid by the relative speed of the fluid and some representative length of the system, and dividing all of this by the fluid viscosity. So, for water flowing through a pipe, one might multiply the density of the water by the speed it is flowing through the pipe and the internal diameter of the pipe, and then divide all of this by the dynamic viscosity of the water. A smaller Reynolds number means a greater likelihood of laminar flow, while a larger number means a greater likelihood of turbulent flow. Thus, higher density, greater velocity, a larger system, or a lower viscosity will all lead to a greater chance of turbulent flow. Generally speaking, a system with a number below 200 is all but certain to have laminar flow while a system with a number higher than 5,000 is quite likely to become turbulent, and anything over a million is all but certain to be turbulent. Of course, there are a number of details in any given system that make it difficult to use a Reynolds number to predict exact turbulence between 200 and a million, but it is a good form of initial analysis. The important thing to remember for our purposes today is any two comparable systems with similar Reynolds numbers will be subject to very similar fluid physics. So if we calculate the numbers for a flapping butterfly wing and a flapping pteropod wing, 
we get some rather interesting results. First, as density and viscosity both vary with temperature, we can assume seawater around 5 degrees centigrade as found in a cold northern ocean, and air around 20 degrees centigrade as seen on a balmy summer afternoon. We can use the wing length as the representative length in the equation and calculate the speed of the wing traveling through the fluid based on a function of its size and the number of wing beats per second. With a bit of minor adjustment to make the numbers a little simpler, we end up with the following Reynolds numbers. A butterfly in a summer meadow operates at a number around 400 or so, while a pteropod in the North Pacific operates at a number around 340 or so. In actuality, these numbers might easily range between 200 and 2000, if not further. Still, even this variation is relatively close as Reynolds numbers go. Thus, despite the radical differences in their environments, these two creatures are dealing with remarkably similar fluid mechanics as they move. As a result, they exhibit surprisingly similar movement patterns in their respective wings. Thank you for listening, and I hope you have enjoyed today's little foray into the unknown. If you are still curious and wish to venture a little further, here are a few things you might consider looking into. If you found this video enjoyable, do feel free to leave a like. If you believe others might enjoy it, by all means, share. If you wish to see more of this channel, a subscription should prove quite helpful. Until next time.